You're listening to the Packernet Podcast Network. Hey there. Did you know Bakers always gives you savings and rewards on top of our lower than low prices? And when you download the Bakers app, you'll enjoy over $500 in savings every week with digital coupons. And don't forget fuel points to help you save up to $1 per gallon at the pump. Want to save even more? With a Boost membership, you'll get double fuel points and free delivery. So shop and save big at Bakers today. Bakers, fresh for everyone. Savings may vary by state. Restrictions apply. See site for details. That's right, he's back. I'm back. We're back, man. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again to the Packernet Podcast. I am your host and resident panelist, as always, Ryan Schlipp. Check us out online, packernet.com. Find me on Twitter, pack underscore daddy. Well, I wish we could have a great conversation about the Minnesota Vikings game, but I have not seen it yet, so I don't really have much for you yet. And don't get me wrong, that doesn't mean we can't uh, talk about and laugh at the Vikings and whatnot, but um, I just don't have any real context uh, beyond the assumption that um, Kirk Cousins still doesn't know how to play in prime time and, um, you know, that kind of stuff. But as it is getting later in the week, it's time to turn our attention to the upcoming Sunday matchup between the Packers and the Bears. I did learn today that Packer fans are completely unwilling, unable and not ready at all to have the conversation about what if we lose. So we probably won't maybe have that conversation today, but maybe we will. <laughs> all I did, I don't even think it was today, it was yesterday. I was going to talk about it yesterday, and then it just didn't happen. Took the day off, etc. It doesn't matter. But I mentioned, which is common knowledge, it's, it's absolutely common knowledge that the Packers struggle coming out of a bye week since Matt LaFleur got here, and even before that, right? And so I just made an observation that Basically, all of Aaron Rodgers' really bad games have been after breaks. That's it. That was my one observation. Everybody lost it, because how dare you mention anything other than we're going to annihilate the Bears? And that kind of just makes me scared for Packer fans, because as much as I really don't see how we lose this game, based on the knowledge that the Packers are the better team and the Bears are are a bad team, um, I do know that sometimes the Packers come out flat, And I do know that every time coming out of a bye, we've come out flat. And I know that when we come out flat, we lose. Um, I still don't know how the Bears overcome their own stupidity. But I am a little nervous that if this game doesn't go well, and I mean like if the Packers don't win by 40, Packer fans are going to lose their minds. Um, Because it's never even for... I don't know how, because it wasn't that long ago, I remember us having the conversation about, dude, we're not very good coming out of a bye. Like, that just was a thing we talked about. But suddenly, we're riding high on the fact that we won the last game. We're ignoring the part where the defense has been kind of bad the last couple of weeks. Uh, bad may be a stretch, but I mean, giving up 30-plus points two weeks in a row. Um, and if they do that, and Aaron Rodgers comes out flat, and the offense doesn't work, then that's not great. Um, but again, I, I I thought we could just have that conversation, but maybe we can't, because everybody got real mad. Like, how freaking dare you mention something that everybody already knew? I don't know. Was, it was a weird experience. I thought I was just like, hey, here's some interesting information I found. And people just had a seizure right there on Twitter. Because, I mean, at, listen, at the end of the day, all I'm trying to do is, is look at information and trying to learn stuff. I'm not so blinded by ridiculous bias that I can't just observe things. Same thing that, that happened today, like with the, the article about Brian Gutekunst. Uh, the ringer finally, like, oh, maybe we should finally start giving Gutekunst some credit. No, maybe you should have given him credit all along, but okay, I guess I'll, I'll take it. But even, even in the comment section, Packer fans who want to hate Brian Gutekunst for some stupid reason are so blinded by their hatred and their bias, they just can't learn new things. They can't learn. It's just, it's unbelievable. And I, I, I'm too stupid to remember, don't argue with him. Don't argue with him. If he's not smart enough to recognize why what he's saying right now is stupid, what do you think you're going to be able to say to him? If he doesn't see as he's typing this right now that what he's saying doesn't make sense, there's nothing you can say to convince him. Because literally the words he's saying out loud should be self-evident to any rational human being that it doesn't make any sense. 
So let, let me, here, here are the two biggest things that kind of summarize just on those two points, because I, I just want to just want to kind of summarize my thoughts on both of these issues. As far as Brian Gutekunst versus Aaron Rodgers, because all the Gutekunst haters, their favorite go-to is Gutekunst isn't the one, it was Aaron Rodgers. And we all know what the retort to that is. Explain 2018, and of course they can't. They can't. There's no explanation. They just pretend that doesn't exist and say, okay, so you're telling me if Aaron Rodgers wasn't on the team, we wouldn't be worse? No, no, no. Two different things. Here's the summary, though. Ready? Explain this. You don't even have to tell me. Go think about it by yourself so you don't have to admit to me that you've been wrong all this time and, and swallow your pride or anything. You just go sit in the corner and think about it. The Packers were bad in 2018, right? They were better in 2019, 2020, and 2021. Why? Why did they get better? Go ahead and answer that question. In my opinion, there's only three right answers. If you were to put, like, what I shouldn't even say why. What's the, the biggest reason? What or who is the biggest reason? Well, you know what? Not even what. Who? One person, point to one person that made the biggest difference in their improvement from 2018 to 2019 and throughout. If your answer is Aaron Rodgers, that's not a good answer because that's not different. <laughs> it's, that's not a, it's not a different thing. Aaron Rodgers is why the team went from bad to good. Oh, yeah, he was on the team already, but okay. You can say Matt LaFleur. You can say Brian Gutekunst. You can say Mark Murphy, which I know nobody's going to want to say Mark Murphy because he's everybody's favorite punching bag. And it's funny because it's really the same people that hate Brian Gutekunst that want to hate Mark Murphy. But it's just, it's easier to hate Mark Murphy because you can't see what he did, right? He didn't draft Jair Alexander. He didn't draft Elton Jenkins. So it's easy to hate Mark Murphy if we just, if we just ignore the fact that we wouldn't have Brian Gutekunst or Jair or Elton Jenkins or any of these guys. We wouldn't have Matt LaFleur. We wouldn't have any, any of the things that we have we wouldn't have right now if it wasn't for Mark Murphy. But it's easy to hate him. And then the people who want to be kind of pro-organization, it's like the, the what do you call that? It's, it's sort of like a meet in the middle point, right? Like, dude, don't trash Gutekunst. That doesn't make sense. Okay, but I'm going to hate Murphy. All right, yeah, I'll, I'll agree. Murphy's terrible. No, he's not. No, he's not. Don't concede that ground. That's stupid. But again, you go figure it out. They improved Something changed, and they got better from 2018 to 2019 through 2021. What was it? As far as the Aaron Rodgers thing, here's, here's the summary. Aaron Rodgers, since Matt LaFleur has gotten here, has had four unbelievably, horrifically putrid games, and only four. There was the game after the bye week in 2019, the game after the bye week in 2020. There was week one after his zero participation offseason. In other words, he didn't play the week before, didn't practice, didn't participate, really. He might have practiced that week, but, you know. And then there was the week following his injury. Those are the four games. So you can try, if you try to say, what is the, the common link there? So many people like, yeah, well, they played Tampa Bay and San Francisco. Obviously, duh, you big dummy. Okay, couple problems. Number one, we played difficult defenses outside of those games. For example, we played Tampa again that exact same year, and Aaron Rodgers graded out really, really well. Beyond that, we played better defenses than Tampa like three or four times that year. He didn't grade out that poorly. So you know what? That explanation doesn't really work. What else you got? It also doesn't explain Seattle, right? He didn't play the week before because of COVID, right? Week off, came back, played terrible. Seattle, terrible defense. And, and, and the point, I didn't, I didn't even want to get into arguments about it because the, the reason I don't like when people argue with me is because then I have to really dig in. And I'm not trying to sit here and trash Aaron Rodgers. I'm just trying to make an observation. And I think the most logical conclusion to come to is that Rodgers has really struggled when he has time off. What about week one in 2020? Yeah, he was great week one 2020. That's true. Still the best explanation I have for his four bad games is he didn't play the week prior. And as far as week one, 20, there's two ways you go about this. Number one, he was not off in La La Land in 2020. He was engaged with the team. He was here in the off season, preparing, practicing, et cetera, et cetera. Number two is just take that week one bad game off the table in uh, 2021. You're still looking at a very high correlation in terms of every single time, if you remove week one entirely, every single time he's had a bye week, in the last three years, he's come back and played the worst ever. 
There's just one really bad game after this entire offseason situation, debacle, whatever. It's an interesting note to me. If you want to get mad about it, you can get mad about it, but it's just, it's it's a reality and I'm concerned about it and I want to talk about it because we're going to spend a lot of time talking about how trash the Bears are, all the millions of correlations and reasons why there's no way we lose this game. There's the spread, the record against Chicago, um, at home, etc. I mean, just down the line. But I, I, we, I want to talk about this one for a second because it matters. Because this is something that we used to be, again, we used to be able to talk about this. This is a serious problem, and it's something that needs to get fixed, and I'm going to bring it up. And I am worried about it. And it's weird that nobody else is. Like, dude, just shut up, man. No, what do you, what? Like, why you gotta, why you gotta bring me down, dude? I've been living in a fantasy land where it's impossible for the Packers to play bad. It's, 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 I'm in a fantasy world where I pretend that those things that we've been talking about for a while aren't real. We pretend that anomalies don't happen. Like, the Vikings who just beat us didn't just lose to the Lions. So... I, I I think it's a big game for that reason. Do I think we lose? No. I mean, I, I don't want anybody getting that impression, but it is, it's one of those sort of fork in the road points, right? As we look at this season, we say, what is the difference between this year and last year, right? Because if we're just the same team we have been the last two years or whatever, then we make it into the playoffs and we get knocked out of the playoffs. There, there's something wrong with the team that has to get corrected. And I think losing after the bye week even though I can't quite 100,000% put my finger on it, it does correlate to the overall problem. It does in some way correlate, right? There's, there's something weird where the team just comes out completely flat, where the team is just not engaged, they're not ready, they're not prepared, right? We talked about prior to when they would fly out to California. Remember, in the, and, and, and there was the whole situation with Matt LaFleur having to fly out later because if we went too early, then they'd, they'd like do a, go party and whatever else. And so rather than just telling the team, if you freaking do that, I'm going to smash you right in the mouth and you're not going to play, you're off the team, et cetera, et cetera, rather than just putting your foot down and saying, no, we're going to go out when we're going to go out. And if you go out and act like an idiot, it's going to ruin your life. Don't play with me. Instead, we're just going to be like, oh, no, 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 we'll just, we'll just leave later. Right, there, there was that whole thing. And I, I do think there's something to that that correlates to when he gives his team a week off and then they come back, they're, they're not ready. There seems to be some, and listen, it is a young team. That's one of the positives of the team is a lot of the talent we have, they're young guys. Maybe part of the problem is a lot of the talent we have, they're young guys. And maybe when they get that little bit of freedom, when they get that week off, when, I, again, I'm making this up, but I'm just, I'm just, that's what I'm saying. I'm trying to question these things. I'm trying to understand. And then the, the biggest thing is, I'm not just trying to come in here and rain on everybody's parade. I'm just trying to think through, is this a different team this year? It seems to me to be a different team. And I think this is, although again, if we beat the Bears, it's like, okay, well, maybe they're different, but it's still the Bears. But I think you can still tell when the team comes out flat and still wins compared to they come out and just smoke the Bears. I think we'll be able to identify that. And the point is, I'm going to be watching for that. I think that matters above and beyond just winning the game. And this is an important game. And it does make me nervous because we can physically lose this game. It's not an impossibility. And I, I hate to keep bringing that up, but I just need everybody to recognize that before we go into this game. It's not destined from the heavens that the Packers have to win this game. And so, from my standpoint, if this truly is a different team, and and again, my biggest area of focus, which I think has been a positive thing from what we've seen so far, is the mental toughness, the the quote unquote grit of the team, but just 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 the focus. You know, it it we we've seen them when the chips are down rise to the occasion. But what about when the chips aren't down? What about when things are great? and you get a week off, and you come back, and the opponent just, there's some peon little team, and you're at home, and it's just, it's not a big deal. Are you going to rise to that occasion? Because that's a different kind of adversity, right? There, there's the adversity of, you got to face the Cardinals, and you got a bunch of, of, of your pieces down and out and injured, and nobody thinks you can do it, and you're underdogs, and nobody believes in you, and you're, you know, the, 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 the it's just, there's, there's almost no way, can you rise to that occasion? Can you overcome those hurdles? But this is a different kind of hurdle. This is a different kind of mental toughness. And, and at, at the end of the day, the playoffs present both of these things. As much as you would think there's no way a playoff team would just not be mentally prepared out on the road. Yeah, well, the Packers have done that. So this is, this is to me, another test, and, and primarily a test for Matt LaFleur. Can you make sure your guys are ready and focused? 
because a week off should be to your advantage. Everybody's healthy. They've had extra time to practice, extra time to prepare, extra time to to get focused on the end goal, which is not just the Bears, but beyond the Bears. But we're not looking past the Bears either. Let's get ready to start right here, catch your breath, start here, and sprint. But we're starting right here in Chicago. The team that comes out of this bye week should be the best version of this team that we've seen so far. That's what we should see for every reason. This is one of the healthiest we've seen. This is probably the most you know rested and, and just, again, healthy, but not just healthy in terms of getting guys back, but healthy in terms of everybody's banged up a little bit. But th- those things have had time to actually heal. Aaron Rodgers has talked about his toe being getting a little bit better every single week. On top of that, on top of the extra time to prepare for the Chicago Bears, there should just be a mental clarity and focus. That's what this time should be. It's not just about going out and drinking and partying and hanging out with your family and going out with your girl and doing all this fun stuff and let's fly out to the beach. And There should be a time to sit and reflect and say, I need to get my mind right to focus so that when I come back, the only thing on my mind is finishing strong, right? It's it's, it's like, you know, resting in between sets when you're at the gym. Sets, S-E-T-S, relax. Resting in between sets at the gym. You're not just like off in your own world. You know, if if you want to rest 60 seconds and you are like, all right, I'm going to like go to YouTube real quick and watch, or go to TikTok and start flipping through, you're wasting that time. It's not just about recovery. You're getting mentally prepared for the next set, for the next, you know, four, five, six, eight reps, whatever it is you do, you should be getting prepared for that so that you're giving it your best when you lay down on the bench and push the weight. If you're daydreaming about Taco Bell, you're, you're not utilizing the time properly. Give your body some rest but mentally, you should be fully engaged. And so again, there, there's this conflicting thing. On one hand, we should be seeing the best version of this team that we've seen so far. All of those things, plus the fact that it's the Chicago Bears, who are not just a terrible team, but a team that has no expectation of winning this game, no expectation of, of carrying through this season. The head coach knows 100% he's getting fired. That, that last press conference he did made me so uncomfortable because he looked like a kid who was talking to his parents after he just got in trouble. He looked like he had no confidence. It made me unbelievably uncomfortable. They know. They know. But that's the thing, that those are the two different pictures. On one hand, the team we should see is just an unbelievable version. We have very rarely seen the offense and the defense click to where we score in the 30s or more, and we don't allow even 20 points. You know, like a a 20-point victory, you know, 10 to 38, just a, a complete blowout. That's the kind of team we'd like to see because that's a team that makes a statement and says, we're coming back stronger, better, faster, healthier. We're stronger than you. We're faster than you. We're smarter than you. We are a better team than you. Not just the Bears, but it's, it's an announcement. We're using the Bears to send a message to the rest of the league. That's what we should see. However, again, the conflict is the team that we have seen is a team that uses this week to get completely unfocused. And they come back to the, instead of being on vacation thinking about football, they come back to the football stadium thinking about vacation. They're still thinking about the beach. And usually they come back and they get absolutely stomped out and that kind of wakes them up like, oh shoot, yeah, uh, football, yeah, I forgot about that. That was, I forgot that you have to actually like really engage to be good at this. I was kind of just, you know, lumbering through this and sucked and uh, uh, we'll be better next week. And then they are, and that's great. But again, it's about, are you a different team or is this the same old, same old? And again, even if they win, if they look sluggish, you know, if, it, if it's like that Seattle game, even though I know Seattle, the defense was on point, but I mean, if it's, if it's kind of like that, where the offense just can't do anything, that's a problem for me. Not because, you know, I mean, yeah, a win's a win and we beat the Bears and that's great and we move on and everything, you know, oh, it's not a big deal. It is though, because again, I'm trying to decide, are we destined for the same fate as every year, or is this just a different team? And so far this year, we've seen a team that we can say definitively has been different. And it's that mental toughness. I just want to see who shows up. And again, Aaron Rodgers has been a key part of this. Again, look at, look at, look at our bad losses after buys. Yeah, other guys have bad days, nothing like Aaron Rodgers. Now, I'm not just trying to put it on him. Obviously, there's other guys having bad days, but I'm just saying that there is, and, and, and especially with him being in the leadership position, you heard Matt LaFleur say it, you know, sometimes when, when the team does well, the quarterback gets too much credit. When the team does poorly, the, the, the quarterback gets too much blame. That's probably true, and he's getting a little bit of that here. 
partially because of his own performance, but also because you're a leader on the team. And the young guys are not going to be more mature and more focused and more intense than the leaders on the team. And if you come back from vacation and are just vibing, just vibing, bro, they don't care either. But if they're goofing off and you look at them and you're like, you know what? I'm not playing this BS. I'm tired of coming back weak. I'm tired of all this stuff. You better, you know, straighten out. There's got to be some accountability. There's got to be the, the this, they, they have to know when they come back that if I'm not focused, I better pretend to be because they are going to rip me apart if I come back in any kind of way other than I'm ready and focused and fired up. And even if I don't have the motivation, I'm going to fake it until I find it. It's a real good football team. But for the last two years in a row, especially last year, the mantra is especially they're good enough to win as long as they don't get in their own way and they keep getting in their own way. The last two years we've lost in the NFC Championship game in embarrassing fashion. And at least in 2019, the 49ers looked real, real good, but it was still an absolute embarrassment and the Packers played horrifically. Last year, Tampa wasn't even that good. Tom Brady played like garbage. We lost because everybody just decided we're not going to play. They got in their own way. This isn't about are they good enough. We know they're good enough. They've been good enough for three years in a row. That's not the point anymore. We know they're good. We know Rodgers is good. We know all these guys are good. We know our defense is good. We know the offense is good. We know Devontae is good. The offensive line is good. We know the running backs are good. We know all these people are good. The corners, the pass rushers, et cetera, et cetera. We know they're good. Can they get out of their own freaking way? And for some reason, after a bye week is a big sticking point for them. And if they come out flat, that, that just sends a signal to me they haven't really changed. They don't still know how to get out of their own way. If they come out and blast the Bears, done deal. Different team. And again, it's especially Aaron Rodgers. If he comes out and has a big day, speaks volumes. And, and, and listen, and, and this is kind of the interesting thing about this. There's sort of colliding worlds here. On one hand, you've got this thing where the Packers got this little bug that, you know, they, 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 this little issue that they can't seem to get over. On the other hand, there's a bunch of information that's pointing to this is going to be a slaughter. Like, number one, Aaron Rodgers has been catching fire lately. His best two games arguably were his last two games, right? So he had his one bad week. Well, he's, he's had two bad weeks, week one and then week 10. But, he, but, but again, you have that one week where you come out flat because you didn't play the week before and then boom, back on track. But again, we, we, we know the, the flat thing. That's over here, right? After a bye, Rodgers going to be bad. The team's going to be bad, et cetera, et cetera. On the other hand, Aaron Rodgers has just recently caught fire. There's the record, which is, I mean, if you just look at Bears Packers, if we just, if we just go back a little bit, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this from the Bears perspective because it's funnier to say they lost than, than it is for me to say we win. I don't know why. It's just, it just a little more catty of me, and it's funny. But here we go. Ready? Here are the results of the Chicago Bears when they play the Green Bay Packers. All right. Loss, 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 win. Loss, 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 win. Loss, 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 win. Get ready for this one now. Loss, 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 win. So, so yeah, since... since just 2011, because that's when the, the biggest streaks were going on. Um, we've got one, two, what did I say? Three, four wins? No, three wins. Three, is that serious? No, four wins. There we go. Nope, 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 three. <laughs> there's this weird little break in here, and I keep thinking above there, there's a win, but there is not. These are all losses. So um, November 4th, 2013, uh, we got... November 26th, 20, see, I don't like that they're all like end of the year, November, uh, November 26th, 2015, and December 16th. Why are they all end of the, I don't like that, but December 16th, 2018. Those are the last times since the Packers won the Super Bowl, basically, that's what the Bears have done against the Packers. So, um, so there's that. And then there's the Packers record against the spread, which we've done this before, but the, Packers, since Matt LaFleur got here, have not lost a game when they're six-point favorites or more. The Packers are 12-and-a-half-point favorites. So again, you got this, just those two things alone, right? The Packers have never lost under Matt LaFleur when they are six-point favorites or more, and they're 12-and-a-half-point favorites. The Packers have never won a game after a bye under Matt LaFleur. 
Something's got to give. So, I mean, who knows? And maybe they'll kind of split the difference where the Packers win, but it's kind of an ugly win. And you go, well, they still play bad after a bye, but they kind of won. But, you know, maybe that'll happen. But I'm, I'm kind of hoping we just answer the question. Either, well, I'm not hoping the Packers lose, but either the Packers lose or we just smoke the Bears. Another thing to keep in mind, 12 and a half point favorites. Only three times have we been favorited by that much or more. Uh, 2019, and these are, again, all late games. December 8th, 2018, against Washington, we were 13-point favorites. We won by five. November 15th, 2020, against Jacksonville, we were 13-and-a-half-point favorites. We won by four. And against Detroit, December 29th, 2019, 13-and-a-half-point favorites. We won by three. We won by five, by four, and by three. They've all been close games, every single one. So now the next biggest was 11-and-a-half-point favorites against Detroit. We won that one 35-17, to 17, so... It's not every time, but generally we don't cover the spread when we're big time favorites, and that's actually been pretty close games. And so again, I, I'm I'm kind of just coming into this game with I don't want to say no expectations because of course I have expectations. You need to beat the Bears. You're better than the Bears. You should win the game. Forget this voodoo nonsense about after a bye, you, you just don't play. That's stupid. You're you're better than them. You're at home. You're playing the Bears. Beat them. Beat them by a lot. Make them look, you know, stupid. But I'm also kind of want to just watch the game and be like, all right, what uh, what's going to happen here? And yeah, I'm going to be a little bit nervous. And can I just say, I, I know you don't want to hear it, and you're probably mad I even brought it up to begin with, but do you know how horrible? I mean, part of the reason a lot of Packer fans don't even want to have the conversation is because we've been riding so high. The Bears are just doing terribly. The Lions are terrible. The Vikings are terrible. And we've been winning. You know, we lost to the Vikings, whatever. They're already broken. They don't even care anymore. They're, they're so beaten up about their season, they're barely even bragging about that anymore. But we still have to play the Bears, the Vikings, and the Lions again. If we lose to the Bears, you know how bad that's going to be? With Justin Fields just coming back at home with the whole I own you thing lingering? Justin, can you imagine Justin Fields yelling, I own you? Or I Listen, l- let me put it this way. I know for a fact somebody has at least suggested, whether or not he's going to do it or not, somebody has at least suggested to Justin Fields that he makes some kind of a comment about how he's going to be owning the Packers in the future. You know that's sitting in his back pocket somewhere, if he chooses to use it or not. If Justin Fields comes back from injury and beats the Green Bay Packers in Green Bay, it's it's open season, and we kind of opened the door for them talking so much trash, as has Aaron Rodgers doing the whole I own you thing. Again, I don't think it's going to happen, but dang. Beyond that, we got to play the Vikings again. If they beat us again, we've been talking a lot of trash. What about the freaking Lions, though? Do you know how much trash we've been talking about the Vikings because they lost to the Lions? We had better not lose that game. <laughs> we had better not lose to the Lions. So, um, I mean, we, we, we got a couple couple chip shots teed up. We should be able to win them. But at the same time, I'm looking at it like, dude, we got the Bears after a bye. That sucks. We got the Vikings who always play us tough. That sucks. We got the Lions who always play us tough. That sucks. And I've been talking so much smack, dude. Ugh. I did a whole episode making fun of the, the, the Vikings about losing to the Lions. I had a tweet that they're not allowed to talk for the rest of the season because they lost to the Lions. And the only response from a Vikings fan was, that's fair. So if he throws that back in my face, we're going to go into the playoffs and I'm not allowed to talk trash anymore. Can't have that. So I'm, I'm kind of just pleading at this point with the Packers, please, if nothing else. I mean, the, another Vikings loss is going to suck, but I'll get over it. You can't lose to the Bears or Lions, though. You just can't do it. Even if we lose to the Vikings, it's like, yeah, well, at least we beat the Lions. You know, we, we got that in our back pocket. Plus, they didn't make the, well, they might not make the playoffs. We'll see what happens. But you know what I mean? Although, if we lose to the Vikings, that's going to suck. Because if the Vikings do get into the playoffs and we have to face them, that's not going to be good. <sighs> Anyways, l- listen, it had to be brought up. It just, it, I, I don't know if anybody else is talking about it. Apparently, they're not because I just brought it up for a second and everybody lost it on Twitter. It's got to be talked about. We got to remember. We have to bring up the elephant in the room. So I brought it up. Are the Packers the better team? Yes. Should they win? Yes. Are they massive favorites for a reason? Of course. Is there every reason to expect them to win? Yes. But that's all based on the team that we're expecting to play, not the team that usually comes out of the bye week. We just need the regular old Packers team to show up. You know what I mean? Like the normal team that we get on a random week seven, whatever. Just, 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 just them. And we got this. 
But anyways, why don't we go ahead and take a break? I have discussed the ugliness, and I will not bring it up again, which is probably a lie, but I'll try not to. But uh, if you'd like to support the podcast, you can do so at patreon.com forward slash pack underscore daddy. You can support this podcast for as little as $1 per month. Otherwise, we'll take a break. We'll be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, let me ask you a question. Have you ever heard in your entire life of test driving a phone network? Well, now you have, because U.S. Cellular is going to let you test drive their network for free for 30 days. So anywhere you go where you got some dead spots, where your service isn't super strong, you're trying to listen to the podcast and it drops out when you go here because you got no internet service anymore, real simple. Just whip out your phone, do a little beep boop bop boop, that's you pushing the buttons to go to the right place, and you can get the app and try it out for yourself. So go ahead and test drive U.S. Cellular's award-winning network free for 30 days. That's U.S. Cellular, built for us. Terms apply, awards based on open signal independent data. So go to uscellular.com for all the details. I want to tell you guys real quick about our new sponsor, Factor. Factor makes delicious, ready-to-eat meals, and they get sent right to your door. They have 35 different options every single week that you can choose from including keto, calorie smart, vegan and veggie, and more. And there's even more to enjoy with over 55 nutrition-packed add-ons that help make your weekly meal planning even more delicious. There's no prep work. There's no messing up six different bowls, mixing stuff. Factor meals are 100% ready to heat and eat. No prep, no cook, no cleanup. Factor is also very flexible with your schedule. You can get as much or as little as you need by choosing between 6 to 18 meals per week. You can also pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime. Factor is less expensive than takeout, and every meal is dietitian approved. So head to factormeals.com slash packdaddy50 and use code packdaddy50 to get 50% off. That's code packdaddy50 at factormeals.com slash packdaddy50 to get 50% off. All right, so you may have noticed I kind of launched into that. Um... Usually I like to do like some precursor type stuff, like, hey, let's look at injuries and stuff. Um, I just, I had to get a, you know, I, I didn't do the podcast yesterday, so I, I really wanted to launch into some stuff. Why don't we slow down? Let's just slow it down. Let's look at this here injury report. Um, first of all, I mentioned David Bakhtiari, very unlikely to play. Um, same is basically true for Jair Alexander. Doesn't sound like he's going to be fully ready to uh, be activated, or it's probably not the right terminology. I think he was activated. It doesn't matter. Point is, I don't think he's playing. Beyond that, Zadarius Smith, uh, as of two hours ago, this is what Tom Silverstein had to say about that. Outside linebackers coach Mike Smith said that Zadarius Smith is eager to come back, but he said that they are not hurrying him back and it would take some time for him to be ready to play because he's been off for so long said maybe he could be ready closer to the end of the season or playoffs. Putting maybe in front of not until the playoffs, that kind of sucks a little bit. But um, I said that it's unlikely we're getting all three, but I would guess we'll maybe get one back. It's looking like it's going to be zero. So the only real positive is that Jair has to be active in the next three weeks. So if it's not this week, it's got to be the next week. If not next week, it has to be the week after that. Otherwise, he's just, he's done for the season. So anyways, the positive news, however, is that Aaron Jones and Rashawn Gary seem ready to go. And uh, it really wasn't that long ago that we watched those two guys go down and just assumed they are probably done for the season. Um, you know, we saw Aaron Jones basically go into the tent and then come out with tears in his eyes and go over to his family and you thought oh, he's done right it's he did something to his knee or something and he's, he's just done and with Rashawn we saw his uh body get snapped in half and they <laughs> when they said they can't show you the replay because it's too gruesome you just assume yep he's done but uh, it sounds like they're both good to go as far as the actual injury report Devonte Adams hamstring limited uh, all week David Bakhtiari uh did not practice Randall Cobb, this is the other news. Randall Cobb is probably going to be out for some time. His status is basically maybe the playoffs. So that sucks. Again, the goal is we need to start getting healthier and not less healthy. And we're still trending in the direction of less healthy. 
right? Even though we're assuming we're going to get those three guys back at some point, we've gotten zero back and we just lost Randall. So we're still going in the wrong direction. Kevin Crane King went from limited to full um, from Wednesday to Thursday. So he's moving in the right direction. Aaron Rodgers uh, did not practice, which he's not going to be practicing. He may not practice the rest of the year, which sucks, but whatever. Uh, otherwise, it's just Malik Taylor. It's one of the smaller injury reports that I've seen. Malik, uh, abdomen injury, was limited Wednesday, full participant on Thursday. Chicago Bears, on the other hand, lots of injuries. you got to remember, I mean, they, 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 their buy is done, so they're just rolling right now. Um, Andy Dalton is injured. And uh, fortunately for them, Justin Fields is better. I don't know if he's 100% better or how what percentage he is, but he is going to be playing. Um, his injury was to his ribs. He's been a full participant this whole week, but uh, he did get all clear, and he is going to be the quarterback on Sunday pending any kind of setbacks or whatever. Um, other injuries that they've got, guys that have not participated, uh, Travis Gibson, the linebacker, has been sick. Jimmy Graham, uh, veteran rest, David Montgomery, which is a real big one, um, shoulder, groin, and glute injury. I don't know how you manage that, but he's real banged up. Um, did not participate on Wednesday. He did on Thursday in a limited fashion. Their kicker, Cairo Santos, has been sick, so they got some illness r- running through their locker room. Mario Edwards, defensive lineman, uh, rib injury, limited Wednesday, full participant on Thursday. Marquise Goodwin, the wide receiver, has a foot injury. Did not participate on Thursday. Akeem Hicks. Akeem has been banged up as well as just not playing his best. I mean, he's just getting up in age. But he's got an ankle injury. He's been uh, limited. Christian Jones, linebacker, back injury, limited Thursday, full uh, full Thursday. Allen Robinson, also been injured quite a bit this season. Uh, hamstring, limited all week. Damian Williams, running back, calf injury, limited all week. Uh, Justin Fields, I already mentioned. Tease Tabor, sick, did not participate Thursday. Cassius Marsh, the linebacker, knee injury was limited. Angelo Blackson, defensive lineman, knee injury limited on Thursday. So again, most of these guys are probably going to play, but there's a lot of guys that are banged up. And you just take all that with everything else that's been going on. It's just the injuries are less physical and more mental, I think, at this point. They're a team that is mentally kind of wrecked. And you, you hear it when we do our um, laughing at the enemy segment. What is one of the biggest complaints about the Chicago Bears? They don't play with heart. The tackling isn't there. I mean, this is one of the more physical dominant defenses. It's the same guys for the most part, but the physicality is gone. That's a mentality. When you know that you're done and, and your defense isn't trying and you're not hitting and you're not blocking and you're not tackling and all that, you're mentally, you know, I, I don't necessarily want to say mentally weak because it's not their character overall, but they're playing that way. They're playing mentally weak. And and when you have a bunch of guys that are dealing with these injuries, your ability to overcome those injuries um, is probably lessened from a mental standpoint. And when you see everybody banged up and all the guys around you are banged up and you go in to, to talk to the doc or to, to ice your injuries and it's just the, the whole area is filled with people that are all banged up and your season's done and everything's ruined. You know, guys like Jimmy Graham are looking at it like, dude, this is seriously how it's going to end. You know, Andy Dalton, same thing. Like, you know, it's it's all the veterans are not providing that veteran leadership that you need. You know, in, in Green Bay, you got guys like Mercedes Lewis who can step in and be like, look, this is what we got to do. Guys like Akeem Hicks are just thinking, get me the heck out of here. Like, how, I, I just want another paycheck. Just give me one more big contract, somebody. Not Chicago, though. Anybody else, I'll take it. Jimmy Graham's thinking about flying his plane off to the Bahamas. He's, a, he's gone. Andy Dalton, I don't know what he's doing, but he doesn't want to be in Chicago. Right, Allen Robinson, he's just, he wants out. The veterans just want out. They're not worried about, here's what we got to do. Here's, you know, trying to get the young guys focused. Not that they don't care, not that they're maybe not providing some kind of wisdom or whatever. My guess is the wisdom is, you know, take care of yourself because, you know, don't worry about this, these freaking places. Don't get hung up on like this team or whatever. If you, if you can find a better opportunity, more money somewhere else, go take it. That's the kind of advice teams like this and veterans on teams like this, especially when, and here's the other funny thing, especially when your entire team is built on free agents. These are all guys that just followed the money. Andy Dalton, Jimmy Graham, Allen Robinson. You think they're going to preach loyalty, (laughs) right? I mean, maybe. I mean, Dalton was a Bengal for a long time. Jimmy was a saint for a long time. But, you know, the the message is going to be take care of yourself. Take care of number one. That's why they're in Chicago. 
They didn't go to Chicago because they want to play for a contender. I don't care what Allen Robinson said. I don't care what Jimmy Graham said about, a, you know, I haven't been on a team this focused or whatever stupid kind. I don't care. They followed the money. At least in Green Bay, you're going to talk to guys that are there because they want to win championships. So what kind of advice do they give the young guys? One is focused on winning. One is focused on just give me my money and leave me alone. These guys are all out the door. And what do the young guys have to look up to? What do they have to look forward to? The best thing you can do if you're a guy like uh, like David Montgomery is think, man, I, I just got to keep putting on the tape. It's kind of like a college prospect playing for a bad school. Like, I just got to do well for myself and hope that I get drafted and that the scouts do their homework and can see. And it's the same thing in the pros. They're just playing for the pro personnel scout. If the, if the Bears aren't going to pay me, I need somebody else that will. I just need everybody to recognize how good I am so I can get paid. I mean, what, what else do you have to look forward to if you're a Bear? Maybe Justin Fields has got the mentality of, you know, we'll, we'll do this rebuild and I'm going to take over and it's going to be great. And all. Maybe. Hopefully for his sake, he has that mentality, but it's, it's hard because that's got to be such a toxic environment. It's a lot of really old guys who know that they're not Super Bowl bound. Where are they going to go? You know, who knows? Maybe next year, Allen Robinson will go to the Patriots and try to win over there, or he'll maybe try to go to the Chiefs or the Packers or something. The Packers won't pick him up, but you know, find somebody that wants him that's a contender. Maybe he's going to, I don't know. Nobody's fighting for Chicago in Chicago right now. Nobody is. Even the coaches aren't. The coaches are not worried about how do we win in three years. The head coach of the football team is thinking, what can I do to not get fired this week? He's probably sitting around having conversations thinking, man, when I get fired, what do I want to do? He's probably thinking, what head coaches can I call? I wonder if I call Andy Reid if he'll take me back. Do I want to go back? You know, I'll probably try my hand at becoming a head coach somewhere else. Maybe I can sucker somebody into thinking it was just a bad fit or it was you know, Pace's fault or uh, Trubisky's fault or somebody else's fault, and I can get a head coaching gig. Do I want to be an offensive coordinator again? I don't know. You know, that's what's going through their head. And again, this is the reason why the Packers need to come out swinging. Because I think if, if you come out early and you connect on a big right hook, they're going down and they're staying down. This, this team isn't going to battle back. They can maybe muster a little bit of intensity, a little bit of we're going to get them. You know, if nothing else, like just get hyper-focused on, I just want to beat the Packers. I don't care about the Super I just want to beat the Packers, right? And so they, they dig deep to find that slight bit of motivation. But all it's going to take is a big right hook from Aaron Rodgers. If they get the ball and drive down the field and score, it's only 7 nothing. You're still in the fight. But mentally, emotionally, I bet they check out. I bet they do. Because what you're doing is you're building up an illusion. And if we can go back to the weight room for just a second, it's like mentally pumping yourself up that you can, I don't know, bench 250. And you haven't been in the weight room in years. Like, I bet I can still do it. And you get it off the rack. And you kind of hold it above your head for a little bit. And you just put put that bad boy right back on the rack. Like, nope, nope, nope. Because when you actually feel the weight and you realize it's that hard just to get it off the rack... And you maybe like flex your elbows a little bit, like you bring it down a little bit, you know, like a couple of degrees you bend your elbow. And you're like, nope, 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 nope. Let's try 135. Let's, <laughs> let's see how that goes. See if I can do 10 of those bad boys. It's one thing to psych yourself up. It's another thing to actually feel the weight. And, and, and it's just, even the weight room isn't even a, a good example because in the past, apparently you were able to do it. But how about this one real quick? Because because I just can't stop with analogies for some reason. You try every day to like sprint a mile. When I say run a mile, I'm like just like a dead sprint. And so you wake up in the morning and it's like, dude, I can do it. Like it's, what is it going to take? There's, you know, there's, there's, there, yeah, it's going to be painful and I can't breathe and all that. But what's it going to, like five minutes? Like I can't suffer for five minutes. I can do this. It's one thing to tell yourself something when you're not actually feeling the pain of it. You can convince yourself, dude, I can, I can put out for five minutes, man. I can do anything for five minutes. I can run for five minutes. I can do this. But when it's been 15 seconds and every step hurts, your knees hurt, your feet hurt, your ankles hurt, you can't breathe. I mean, you're literally like your lungs are breathing. You can't catch your breath and your brain goes into panic mode. Like when somebody's holding your head underwater and it's only been 10 seconds. But the fact that you can't physically get back up, you panic and feel like you've been underwater for 10 minutes. The point is, when you feel it again, you realize, you know what? Nope, I can't do it. Even though you can probably mentally fight through it, you should be able to. Same with the Bears. You go down 7 nothing. you should be able to say, you know what? I don't care. I'm going to fight through this. We got this. And maybe you will. But there's something about when you feel it. 
right? Like, we, dude, we can take the Packers. I'm going to get them. And you watch as that offensive line pushes you around, as Devontae just runs circles around your corners, as, as Aaron Rodgers just picks you apart down the field. You just get that, like, that, that muscle memory where it's like, oh, yeah, never mind. I'm an idiot. We can't beat them. No, I was being an idiot when I was dreaming in my hotel about how we're going to beat the Packers. This is never going to happen. This is, they're, they're way better than us. I'm not fast enough. I'm not smart enough. We're not good enough. The guys next to me are trash. My defensive coordinator, Desai, is a joke. Um, this is not going to work. So um, this is stupid, and I want to go home. But you got to come out swinging. Don't give them hope because they're going to be fired up. They're going to have, they're going to give themselves something. Every, every team's coming in with some little thing, and that's going to be their thing. Aaron Rodgers said, I own you. We're going to own him in his own place. Blah, blah, blah. Justin Fields, right? I'm going to, we're going to, all, all that, right? Even Akeem Hicks, like he, he, he's got to hate the Packers. I'm sure he's thinking about his paycheck. He's thinking about possible retirement. He's thinking about his aches and pains, and he doesn't want to be out there, and it's freaking cold in Green Bay. It's cold in Chicago too, but it's just, nobody likes the cold. Like, I don't want to be here. I don't want to do this just so that we can lose again. But they still hate the Packers. And they're going to dig deep and they're going to find that. And if they go out and score a touchdown, they're going to get even more fired up. And you just can't feed that beast because it's not going to die until you kill it. So if you get the opportunity, to kill it early. So I, if it's me, I want to be aggressive. Do I want the ball first? I think I do. And if they get the ball, I want to be aggressive on defense. Now, it's, it's high-risk, high-reward kind of thing because if you, you know, blitz everybody and he throws a 40-yard pass, that sucks. But I still want to be aggressive. If I, can, if I can make him remember that Cleveland Browns game on his first series and give him flashbacks to Miles Garrett just terrorizing him, I would like to do that, please, and thank you very much. I want to assault the quarterback. I want to make them want to go home so badly. I want everybody on that team that is up for a contract to think anywhere but here. Anywhere but here. I never want to play here again. I don't want to play in Soldier Field. I don't want to play in Green Bay, Wisconsin. I don't ever want to play Aaron Rodgers again. I don't want to be here anymore. I want to go to Arizona. I want to go to Tampa. Take me to LA. Take me to Vegas. I don't care. Get me out of here. I don't want to do this anymore. And the Vikings game's on. That's pretty sweet. But anyways, I'm probably going to go uh, watch this here Vikings game. It looks like as of right now, and this is you guys obviously know the result, I do not. Prior to this game against the Steelers, the Vikings have a 28% chance of making the playoffs, a uh, 0.4% chance of uh, winning the division, um, less than 1% chance of a first round bye, and a 0.3% chance of winning the Super Bowl. So not horrible odds of, I mean, the other three don't really matter, not horrible odds of um, making it to the playoffs, somewhere between a third and, you know, 25 and 33%, somewhere in there, 28. If that win, if they win, it jumps up to, looks like 36%. If they lose, it drops to 14%. Here's the other exciting thing, though, is as I look at the, uh, Green Bay Packers odds, um, as of right now, prior to this game, the Packers have a greater than 99% chance of making the playoffs, right? It's not a lock, though. A greater than 99% chance of winning the division, 33% of a first-round buy, 15% to win the Super Bowl. If the Vikings, however, lose to the Steelers, the Green Bay Packers are a lock to make the playoffs. That's a done deal. A um, 34% chance of a first-round buy, 15% to win the Super Bowl. So doesn't move the needle a ton, um, if, if they win, for example, the Packers are still greater than 99% chance to uh, make the playoffs and win the division and everything. We drop to a 32% chance of a first-round buy, still 15% to win the Super Bowl. So it doesn't move that much of a, the, the needle that much, but we are a lock to make the playoffs at that point. So that's pretty exciting. And here comes Big Ben. So uh, I'm going to call it. You folks have yourselves a fantastic Friday. There's a first down to get into Viking territory so happy to see this. Anyways, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Have a good one. Bye-bye.